Hi, this is Cheryl McQueen, guest designer with Del Bellis Designs. Today's tutorial will be part three of my series on how to use vellum in making cards. Today we will look at using texture plates to create interest in a vellum overlay to our card base. Here is an example of what we will be working on today. Let's begin by looking at the supplies. We will be using the following items. We will be using the Lavinia Multifarious Smooth and Supreme A6 White cardstock cut to four and three quarters inches by three and a half inches. This one is a um, really good cardstock, nice smooth surface that will give you a good blend. We will also be using a sheet of vellum that we have also cut to be four and three quarters by three and a half inches. We will use a white cardstock that's cut to five inches to three and four, three. I'm sorry, five and three quarter inches, which will be a frame for our card when we make the final piece. The stamp that we're going to use today is the Three Woodland Mice, which is LAV402, and I think we'll go ahead and use this mouse here today. The uh, ink that I use for my stamping is the Black Archival ink. I use Ranger today, but um, one of the really great ones to use is the Versifying Claire Noir. Uh, you can find that on the Del Bellos Designs website. We will also be using Tim Holtz Distress inks. We're going to be using the Wilted Violet, the Prize Ribbon, and the chipped sapphire. Other items that we'll be using today will be a glue pen. This is the Quickie Glue Pen by Sakura. We'll be using a fine tip black pen. Very fine tip on the end of this pen. We'll be using adhesive running tape. Or we can also use just a regular uh, adhesive craft glue. I have also got a one inch circle mask that we will be using to make our moon. It's kind of hard to see there. I have actually put a little piece of painter's tape on the back of it. That way it will stick down to the card when we begin to put our ink on. I'll also be using the stamping plate today uh, to make sure that we get a nice clean spot for uh, our stamp on our card. And finally, we'll be using some embellishment little half circle pearl pieces on the corners of our cart. An optional thing that you can do if you'd like to, I went ahead and did on this one, you might not be able to see it as clearly, but I've used um, glitter on the snow to kind of give just a little bit of a snowy effect. You can also use puff paste. This is a, what called fluff it paste by um, pink ink designs that you can also use in the same spots and where I put the glitter instead um, to make it look like a textured snowbank. Please see below for the detailed list of supplies and the links to find them on the Del Bellos Designs website. Let's get started making our card. As I said earlier, here is the card design that we're going to be making today. First thing we're going to do is we're going to use a texture plate in order to create our vellum birch trees. So here is a, the one that I am using. The great thing about the texture plates is that um, you can use any kind of texture plate to um, embellish your vellum pieces um, to lay over the tops of your cards for interest. So today we're going to be using this one. So we'll start with taking a piece of vellum and just placing it inside of our embossing folder and closing it. The machine that I use is the Big Shot. Um, there are lots of different machines that you can use that help you to um, make your embellishment uh, 
with the embossing. With this particular machine, we just place a plate down, place our folder on top, and then another piece of paper, I mean, sorry, another piece, another plate, and just feed it through. And what this does is put enough pressure down on it in order to make the design in the piece of vellum. So when we open up our folder and take out our piece of vellum, you can see that it has embellished the design. The texture is on the top, so I can actually feel the texture of the birch trees in the paper. So now that we've got that piece done, we can go ahead and start working on our inking of our base piece. Now we will work on our card layer. We're going to start out by placing our moon mask somewhere close to the right hand side of our card. I kind of like for that to show the moon to show up just a little bit in between my trees so that's why I'm going to kind of place it over there to the side. Then we're going to go ahead and start with our wilted violet and we'll just take a little bit of the wilted violet on our blender and just kind of swirl it around in some random places. doesn't really matter where you put it, just kind of blend it in whatever places you like. It also doesn't have to be solid. Different shades of color give it a little bit more natural look. Now we're going to move on to our prize ribbon. We'll fill in the other spots with our prize ribbon and we'll actually let it go ahead and overlap some on the wilted violet. That kind of gives it a little bit of a third shade there with a, a little make a more of a dark shade of a violet with the blending of the two colors. Sometimes you might want to take just a little piece of paper so that you can, you can see I've got a couple of fingerprints and we can blend those out, but if you hold your card with a piece of paper or a card stock, then you don't get the smears from your finger or any dirt or, or other inks that you don't want in those particular spots that might have gotten on your hands onto your card. All right. Just a little bit more so we can get some darker shades in there. And now we've got a basic start on our background. So we're now going to create a snowbank actually using a scrap piece of cardstock. So what I've done is I've grabbed a scrap piece of cardstock that I've already used. And we probably don't want our stone make to be much more than an inch. So I'm just going to kind of start and gently tear hills and valleys in my piece of cardstock here. And we'll use that as our snowbank. 
that's just a little bit quicker way um, to make a snowbank. If you'd like, you can also mask out this area and just leave it white when you are doing your blending of your other colors. But I decided to go ahead and give this a try and see about a, a little difference it makes. Now, we're ready to go ahead and, and glue this down. Uh, you can use your adhesive running tape if you'd like to do that to put it down. But, as you can tell, it's going to be a little bit harder to use this running tape when you've got these rough edges. So I'll go ahead and do my straight edges with the running tape. And then I'm just going to take my quickie glue pen here and just put a little bit of glue at the very tops of the hills and valleys. so that we can get those to glue down. You can also obviously use just a regular adhesive craft glue to, to glue it down. And e any of those uh, methods will work. So I'll now take this snowbank and apply it to my card. If you find out that your snowbank card is just a little bit bigger, mine looks like it fits pretty well, but you can just take a pair of scissors and trim down any excess that flows over the side of your card. Yeah, mine actually fit really, really well. Just a tiny little piece there. All right, so now we've got our card ready to begin um, putting on the chip sapphire around the edges and just a little bit around the moon to create an aura. So let's go ahead and do our aura first. Make sure my piece didn't slip here while we were creating our background. All right, then we're just gonna take the chip sapphire. Let me go ahead and close up the Prize ribbon, get that one out of the way. I'm not sure what I do with the lid, so I'll set it aside. Oh, there it is. All right, and then we're just going to take it and flick around the outside of the circle of our moon, just to get that little glow around the edge. Then we're going to take our chip fat sapphire. I can't say that chipped sapphire <laughs> and we're just going to gently go around the edges to just create just a little bit of a darker kind of frame And if you want a few darker places in on your background, you can also go ahead and do a couple of darker spots in there too. It's just however you like the way it looks. All right, so now we're ready to go ahead and remove our mask for our moon. A lot of times I like to put clouds across it, but because we're going to have the vellum on top of it, I like to have the bright starkness of the moon be able to show through our piece of vellum here. So now we are ready to go ahead and uh, do our mouse onto our card. So I'm going to go ahead and take my stamping platform, move some of these items out of the way that we don't need right now, and we're going to take our card. I have placed a sticky sheet down. This makes it so that I don't have to use magnets. Um, Patty Del Bello did a very good tutorial on how to make um, your uh, stamping platform be able to be used without magnets. Be sure and check that out. 
All right, so I'm just going to stick this down. That way it doesn't shift around on me. And then I'm going to get my mouse. Now, what I would like to do is basically kind of have him between the tree trunks. So, I don't know if you can see, there's one tree right there and one right there. So, I'm going to have him kind of peeking between the two. So, I'll lay him down there. And then, we will take our black ink and ink him up. And because the snowbank is uh, a different level height than our cardstock, I'm going to go ahead and put a little extra pressure so that we can hopefully get an even more even impression because we will have just a little bit of a difference in the height of the the uh, papers there. And you can see I've got just a little bit of a line showing, so I'm going to go ahead and re-ink him just a little bit more and see if we can't press down where that paper beats. And make it so that that doesn't show. There we go. Alright, so now we can go ahead and remove our card because this is the only stamp that we're going to be using. We can put our platform aside. So now let's go ahead and ground him so that he looks like he's actually standing in the snow instead of floating around. I'm going to take my little fine tip black pen and I'm just going to draw a little bit of ground and grass under his feet. And then I'm going to go ahead and put just a few little sprigs of grass popping through the snow in a few little random spots. All right, then let's go ahead and give him just a little bit of shadow. So we'll go ahead and take our chip sapphire again. And just kind of dab right under him. It looks like he's casting just a little bit of a shadow there underneath him. All right. We will set this aside. So that we can now go ahead and put our vellum sheet on top. Now this would be the place before we actually attach it where we would decide whether we want to use the glitter like I did in this card. See if I can get an angle where you can actually see the glitter. I actually put it in just in between so where the tree is I didn't put any glitter. It was just in between so it looked like the snowbank had the glitter. I think I'm actually this time I'm going to try to do it just plain. So we will be doing that on top of it. But we have another option. If you would like to have a little bit more definition, you can actually take your pen and trace around, and I'll show you how I did that, just trace around the edge of where your trees are. and then go into the little indentions where the bark makes the darker color and just color that in. This obviously is optional. If, if you would like it to have a little bit more of a starker contrast, I won't finish it out, but let me kind of show you how that looks. So when you put, put it on top, 
you get a little bit more of a definition than you do when you just leave the vellum plain. If I were to use this one, I would do would create my other card and have my mouse in between the, the trees and get that nice effect of the, the sharp contrast. I like the way this looks as well. Today we'll just go ahead and do our vellum sheet. That way it just kind of gives the hint of the birch trees in front. Now this is where we want to just barely use a little bit of glue because your glue will show up um, even if it is a clear glue. So I'm just literally putting a dot in each corner on my vellum sheet. Then I'm just going to turn it over and place it in right on top in place and then just press down lightly on my corners to get the glue to stick. Hold that for just a moment. Again you can use this glue stick or you can use a craft glue but just if you use the a craft glue bottle just make sure you've got one with a very fine tip and as we did on this one and when I get through and we get make the card and put the completing finishing touches on it then I'll show you where how we put these on top to cover up those glue dots so now our card is ready for us to go ahead and put together we will take our piece of frame this is the one that was cut five by three and a half and we'll take our card that we have just finished do our running tape or glue I like the running tape because it's very easy to just put that right on top now if I, I'm looking here at my card and I see that my vellum is just slightly bigger than my card so I'm just going to take my scissors and just trim off that little tiny extra piece of vellum that was just slightly bigger all right and now we're ready to just center that in the middle of the frame and press it down and so there's our first frame then we are ready to go ahead and put the card the, with the vellum on it on top of our cardstock piece for the card base. This piece was a eight and a half by eleven sheet of cardstock that I cut in half so that I've got a five and a half length and then I just folded it in half. So the eight by five and a half then folded in half. And we'll do the same process again. And now we will put our framed piece onto our card. I'm going to scooch this so I can make sure I get it centered. And now for our final step, we will take four of the little half pearl pieces. using our glue pen put a dot and glue it in the corner
And one more to go. And that's it. Our card is finished. This is a nice, fairly quick card that you can do. And you get the really neat look of the vellum over the top of the background. Creating the nice soft background and then the hint of the birch trees in the foreground. I hope that you have enjoyed watching this video and that you'll give this technique a try. If you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them for you. Uh, please be sure to uh, check out the Del Bellows Lounge on Facebook. And there's all kinds of ideas there. And the design team, lots of videos that you can watch. I hope you have a wonderful day.